非常有权势，人们都对我忠心，对我无条件的服从。但是现在，大法师，这些僵尸都真的死去了，人们都不理我了。我已经失去控制他们的力量。我走了好几个月，寻找这座古堡。我求求你，大法师，请给我帮助。让我的七金师复活，让我重新统治当地的人们。Wretch, I do not grant favors. I do not accede to the requests of minions. Know you not Dracula commands even from the confines of this miserable place? This miserable place. Yet, you can serve me, Ka. I need your mortal coil. I need the form of your miserable carcass. I need your vile image. 
I need to walk this earth again. Freed from these walls. Freed from this mausoleum. I will return to your temple. In your image, Ka. I will recall the seven golden vampires as my own host. Tools of my vengeance on mankind. I will take on your mantle. Your appearance. <gasps> your image. <laughs> The legends of ancient China have their roots in the mists of time. Some are awesome and terrifying in their implication. Some are real and have their foundation in truth. It is a doomed village somewhere in the vast center of China that becomes cursed each year at the time of the seventh moon. It cringes in fear as it listens to the half-heard cries of souls in torment 
and the terror strikes deep into the hearts of the inhabitants. The whispered word is vampire, and the horror is real and very close. Once in a while throughout the ages, some brave man, tortured with grief and angry frustration, will fight and conquer his own fearful dread and venture outside the walls of his village to do battle with the monsters that torment his people. Some years ago there was such a man, the poor farmer, who had lost his most treasured possession to them. His name, so they say, was Siu Tenan.
I believe the legend to be true. I believe that this is the way the farmer died, and in dying, he destroyed the seventh vampire, one of the cursed creatures that live enshrouded in an aura of fear and terror. I do not know the location of this village or even the area in which it can be found, but I know it exists. Still cursed, still doomed. For of the seven vampire creatures, six, still survive. Now my studies and research into this subject and my own confrontation with an arch vampire leave me in no doubt whatsoever as to the validity of this particular story. If vampirism exists in Eastern Europe, and I can assure you it does, there is no reason to question its existence in other parts of the world. Its foundation, its very beginnings, may have stemmed from ancient China. Now, no one knows better than you, the faculty of Chinese history at this renowned university, that many of your legends are based on truth and documented experience. Professor Van Helsing, we have heard of your research in Transylvania and the reports of your confrontation with a certain Count Dracula, an undoubted madman. Excuse me, sir. Dracula was not a madman, at least not in the accepted sense. He was the most grotesque creature the arch vampire, lord of the undead. These monsters may find sanctuary in the imagination of the peasants of Transylvania, but China has a sophistication that has flowered and bloomed over the course of more than 3,000 years. You cannot diminish their sophistication with vague tales of devil monsters and grotesque fiends. Credulous with some intelligence, sir. But I do. That is why I am here now and would like to continue my research with your help, to use your knowledge, your facilities, to work with you, have access to your documents. Vampires do exist. I know they exist. I beg of you to listen to me, take me seriously. I am an outsider, I accept that. But I have experienced the horror. 
<laughs> the aftermath. No one has a greater respect for Professor Van Helsing than I, Leyland. But your father is a dedicated, outspoken man, and I fear he's becoming somewhat unpopular with the university people. Oh, because of his theories on the vampire legends? Mm. Well, these are difficult times. As the British trade consul in Chungking, I have to warn compatriots to tread carefully. I'm only allowed to remain here by the grace of the local authorities. Any embarrassment could destroy all the goodwill I've built up. And when there are people like Leung Han in the city... Well, who's he, sir? A sort of Tong leader. Awful blackguard. How oh, very jolly. Hmm. Well, unfortunately, I cannot pick and choose my guests these days. Well, there must be some you did choose, sir. Hmm. Ah, yes. Mrs. Vanessa Buren, a Scandinavian lady. Her husband died about two years ago, I believe. Left her well provided for. Evidently. Those earrings must be worth a fortune. She's on a world tour, actually traveling alone. I can't say I approve. Well, I mean, dash it all, they'll want the boat next. She has mine, sir. I do wish she wasn't wearing all that jewelry. And if I were a thief, it wouldn't be the diamonds I'd covet. And there are some here who would covet both the jewels and the lady. I'll introduce you. Mrs. Buren, may I present Mr. Leyland Van Helsing? How do you do? Delighted to meet you. You are the son of the famous Professor Van Helsing. I am so very interested in your father's work. Many people in my country have a great respect for his reputation. He'd be delighted to hear that, Mrs. Byrne, at this time. I would so much like to meet him. Oh, I'm afraid we won't be staying in Chungking much longer. But perhaps before he then leaves... Then he's here. Oh, yes, if I could meet him. I read his books about Count Dracula and his travels in Transylvania and to meet the vampire catcher in person. In point of fact, Mrs. Byrne, my father is primarily an anthropologist. And I fear one does not catch a vampire. Who's there? Who are you? What is it you want? My name is Chi Ching, Professor. I come to apologize for the behavior of my countrymen. Their ignorance is to be pitied and then dismissed. Ah, uh -huh. you were at the lecture. I was. And I listened most attentively to your words. Well, thank you. The truth deserves respect. You believe the legend of the seven golden vampires? Of course. Then I imagine you're the only person in Chongqing who does, Mr. Su. Forgive my intrusion into your rooms. I want to speak to you alone. Well, please sit down. May I offer you some refreshment? Thank you. No. I understand you are soon to leave Chongqing. Yes, I shall go to Hong Kong and catch the packet boat back to Europe. Had you heard the story of the vampires before? The name of the farmer who destroyed the seventh golden vampire was Shi Tianan. The name of the village is Peng Gui. Su Tianan? Su? That is your family name? Shi Tianan was my grandfather. Peng Gui is my ancestral village. And the vampires 
still rule it. I don't think I disapprove of ladies travelling the world unaccompanied. I would say it has its hazards, Mrs. Brown. Danger and excitement are like food and drink to me. And I'm fortunate I can indulge myself. I shock you? Not at all. Come now. If I were an English gentlewoman... I grant you that might be different. I'm sure I shock our gracious host. Well, perhaps just a little. I beg your pardon, ma'am. Mr. Leung Hon extends his most cordial and respectful wishes and begs the honour of escorting Mrs. Burren to her lodgings and allowing her the benefit of his company and protection. Would you give Mr. Lung Hong my sincerest apologies and tell him I have already offered to escort Mrs. Burren to her home? Do you think he understands? Oh, yes. He understands, all right. I'll give my shawl. You realize what you've done. You've caused Leung Hon to lose face. Here, that is an unforgivable crime. Well, in that case, sir, could I trouble you for an escort? We need your knowledge, your skill to fight the curse of Bing Gui. Well, I'll give you all the information I can. You do not understand, sir. We wish you to journey with us to Bing Gui. We need to take you back with us. We? My brothers and I. We are pledged to rid our people of the vampire curse. We must lift the terrible shadow from our village. But we cannot do this alone. An expedition into the hinterland would require a small army of bearers and guards and quite a lot of money for equipment and so forth. I have very little, I'm afraid. Are you and your brothers rich men, Su Ching? We have nothing, sir, except our strength and our willingness. You have no need of God with she brothers at your side. Now, you saw and heard the reaction to my lecture at the university. Nobody believed me except you, my friend. Now, in the mountains of Transylvania, the vampiric legends are very strong. You can almost feel the terror. It has a tangible quality. But here, <laughs> perhaps even I need proof. And you will join us if you have that proof, Professor. Well, yes. If the expedition could be mounted, yes, I would indeed join you. Behold that. The golden medallion taken from the seventh vampire of Pingui. <laughs> night for walking, don't you think? I get so tired of sitting around. I'm not a retiring English rose, Miss Van Helsing. I don't take the blushing, and I certainly don't paint away at the first and proper suggestion, whether I come from a Chinese rope or a very proper English gentleman. The totally emancipated female. I think you might like your women more fragile, perhaps. Perhaps. Oh, dear. I am embarrassing you. <laughs> Let's change the subject. I particularly want to talk about your father. I find him totally fascinating. Oh, <laughs> 
Ever since you arrived in Chongqing, you and your son have been under our protection. No harm could befall you. Already your son has witnessed the skills of my brothers, Gui the bowman and Da the axeman. They are four others, each one a master of the martial arts, ready to guard you. But one thing is certain, father, we can't stay in Chongqing. Maybe this, this trip to Ping Kuei would be the answer. It would need a great deal of finance. How much? I'm sorry, ma'am. How much would this expedition cost? We will need stores and provisions. Ping Kuei is a long way away. I think... perhaps 10,000 Chinese dollars, madam. You have it. What? I'll finance the trip to this village. On one condition. And what is that? That you take me along too. I think a vampire hunt sounds exciting. Well, Mrs. Baron, it is quite out of the question. A woman couldn't possibly make such a hazardous trip. We'd be going to unknown territory, areas that are unmapped. And the countryside abounds with robbers and brigands. I know. I also have to leave Chongqing. I suspect the fate Mr. Leon Hong has in store for me is rather more colorful than what he plans for your son. Uh, Su Ching, perhaps you will explain to Mrs. Baron. The dangers are many. Yet, if you could believe that my brothers and I will be beside you every moment of every day, then I'm sure I have very little to fear. I really must protest. It won't do the slightest bit of good, Father. The lady has a will of her own. We have a sister. Her name is Mei Gui. It means uh, as beautiful as a rose. It will be her honor to attend you. So now, all is in the hands of the gods. We should be ready to leave Chongqing by the first light of tomorrow's dawn.
From here we go on foot. I said no harm will befall you on a journey. It was the most fantastic display. I've never seen anything like it. My brothers will die in your defense. This is our way. You should know more of the others. And perhaps keep their names in some corner of your memory. My twin brothers, the swordsmen, Song and Shan, their blades are of burnished silver. Zhi Tao, the massive one, keep up the maze. And he has a strings of ten oxen. Bao Kui, many years ago, he chose the short stepping spear and is now his master. Da, the X-Men, and Gui, the bowman, you already know them. And we must not forget Mei Gui, our little sister. May I predict that your son will not easily forget her name. And what of you, Su Jing? How did you really find me? It wasn't chance that brought you to the university, was it? You are a famous man, Professor. Oh, no. No, I'm not famous. Perhaps in academic circles, but I'm regarded as a... There's an authority in some specialized field, but no more than that. Then I put it to you, ah. Professor. Did I find you? Or were you sent to us? You have fought the Arch Vampire, and you are the final authority. And you will vanquish the demons. My knowledge, so far as it goes, is limited to the European Hemisphere. I had hoped to learn something of the East from the Faculty of Chinese History, but as you witnessed, the professors were not forthcoming, to say the least of it. When a time comes, when we meet the creatures face to face, you will know what to do, Professor. <laughs>
dealing with mortal beings. What you must understand is that they are already dead. They are cursed creatures, forever craving human blood for their very existence. They are immensely strong and possess black powers that are far-reaching. I'll fall before them, and you too will be eternally damned. Yes, yeah, they can be destroyed. Oh, yes, they can. They abhor anything that has a holy significance. They fear the word of the Lord. In Europe, the vampire walks in dread of the crucifix. But here, it will be the image of the Lord Buddha. These are our protection. But how to destroy them? A wooden stake driven deep into the heart. Or better still, a silver shaft. Fire. What a fire. Not in Europe. In the East, perhaps. I don't know. There are many things I don't know yet. But one thing I do know. Now this uh, golden medallion is the symbol of their undead life force. The remaining six vampires will do anything they can to retrieve it. Once it's in their hands again, they can reincarnate the seventh vampire. <laughs> It's very beautiful. Hmm? What? Oh, make way. Who, he says, and she gives him such a smile. Back in my country, that is an open invitation to help with the dishes. It's a strange night, isn't it? Do you think they could be falling in love? Out there in this desolate place. I think it is most likely. How mm. oh, nice. They're lucky. They'll always remember this moment, whatever happened. Are you afraid? Yes. And yet, I'm glad I'm here. Isn't that strange?
it will be dark soon. We must find shelter before the sun goes down. The nights are very cold here. <laughs> I'll never take another country walk as long as I live. <laughs> there are some caves up ahead. We can rest there. seen a living creature for over three hours. No birds, no insects, not even a lizard. Oh, it's a godforsaken place. That's a very apt description. God forsaken. I like a bath. Lots of warm water, perfume so. Oh, my poor feet. But I could do with some sleep. About ten days worth. Like it. I hate it, Professor. I mean the atmosphere. There's something malignant here. Well, I don't think we're going to find a village in all this wilderness. But maybe they've forgotten their way back. We could be miles from where we should be. Leyland, you are a great comfort to me. I'm sorry, but I Oh no. We're on the right track and heading in the right direction. I'm sure of that. How do you know, Father? Instinct, perhaps? That I've been here before, Phoebe? You've never seen the place, yet every detail is crystal clear. Strange, unaccountable, but it happens occasionally. You know just what's around that corner, the moment before you turn. Do you know what is around this corner? We are approaching the village of Pinque and the lair of the vampires. Well, as long as they don't come out to meet us. There will be food soon. Well, I never thought I'd be happy to sleep in the cave. We shall be safe here. Wild animals will not venture into the cave. And my brothers will keep watch throughout the night. Wild animals? We haven't seen a thing that moves or breathes for the last 20 miles. Sometimes it is the darkness that brings them out.
you like a beautiful porcelain kitten. Then suddenly you're a fighting tigress. It's incredible. It displeased you. Oh, it amazed me. There's three of them. There are three vampires here. Those creatures? They are their victims, the undead. They're slaves throughout the ages. My brothers cannot survive another attack, Professor. We've destroyed half their number. Three still remain. Just three demons terrorizing Ping Kuei, your ancestral village. Now, what would you have us do? Turn back. We know these creatures can die. They're not omnipotent. We'll make preparations the next time be ready for them. Jane, remember why you came to see me in my lodging at Tonking. Don't give up now. is true. <laughs> Every detail. Over the next hill is the home of my ancestors, Ping Gui. Ching, we must make sure they can't sweep round the far end of this trench. We will extend it as far as we can. In a time left to us. Go on. I think the trench and the stakes will stop them, Father. For a while, with any luck. A dismal place. I think Mrs. Barron quite likes it, you know. No, thank you. <laughs> Romance flourishes in the strangest places. Doesn't it? Thank you. 
修善果，还有被财，这件都是主要去做善事，善大事，一个是去做的是，另外一个。好了。Hear ye, great demons of hell! Watch over these thy disciples. Thus do we dedicate ourselves to your service and your commands.
and Helsing, across the globe, even to this very place do you plague me. Dracula. <laughs> Count Dracula. I knew it. I knew you had to be here. A curse on you and your house. You show yourself. Or must you hide behind the image of another man? Is the mighty Dracula too frightened to reveal his face to me? I am Dracula, Lord of Darkness, Master of the Vampires, Prince of the Undead, Ruler of the Damned! Prove it. Right. Van Helsing, you will once more see my face before you die. Oh, my God. 